This is Tandy Banks, Elite Applications Engineer for Go Engineer. Uh, today in this quick tip, I want to cover a little bit of the exploded view functionality within the assembly environment. Uh, we've got some videos out there how do you work with multi-body parts in the part environment, but uh, again, today I'm going to focus on how we work with exploded views within the assembly. Our exploded view function is found within the uh, command manager on the assembly tab. It's our ribbon toolbar up here at the top. If I select on exploded view, I get this great little how-to on the left-hand side that you know, tells me I select a component and a manipulator handle is going to be activated. And I'll use those handles to be able to drag these components around. One of the important options to point out is down here at the bottom where it says select subassembly parts. Because we've got a subassembly in here and I want to move the subassembly as a whole, I'm going to clear this option and I'm going to come out and select my subassembly. There's that manipulator handle that it was talking about in our how-to. I can grab a hold of one of these axes of this handle and drag the component up. And you can see it grab all three uh, parts of that subassembly. Now by selecting the subassembly option, I can come in here and grab a individual components, use those manipulator handles in order to move those components of the sub. I'll do that with another one of our individual components we've got here. Just drag that out to the right a little ways. And we'll grab the other pin and drag that to the left. Now there's a lot of times where you want to be able to drag a component and it's not exactly in the X, Y, or Z axes. So if you right click on a, the manipulator, you have the option to align to. You have some other options there as well, but I'm going to use the align to function, select the end face of that pin, and whenever I do that, now that little manipulator is aligned to that end face, allowing me to drag that in a direction that's a little more applicable to that particular component in its orientation. Grab a hold of my yoke female, drag it out, and I'll just kind of continue through the process here. This time with the spider, I'm going to use that align to function again. I got to that by right mouse button click on the manipulator. There are a lot of times where I want to be able to move a component in two different directions. So I do that in two separate steps. Select the component, move it in the first direction, select the component a second time, and then drag it in either another step or, or an opposite direction. can select this yoke male. I'll do the same thing to it. I'm going to drag it down first. I'll select that component again and drag it out to the left. Now, I was pretty methodical in the order that I disassembled these components using the exploded steps. But if you happen to get those steps out of order or needed to make some changes, you can use a simple drag and drop in order to do that. If you need to edit any given step, you can double click on that step and the parameters for that, that uh, particular feature will be displayed here on the left hand side. When you're done making your edits, you can click the done button. Green check mark closes you out of the exploded dialog. Our exploded views reside in our configuration manager uh, tab of our feature manager tree. And so you can see here there's a plus sign next to our configuration name now. And if I click on that expand symbol, it will show me the exploded view name underneath this. These can be renamed. Um, if you double click on the, or on the um, exploded view name, you're able to cycle between it being collapsed and exploded. You also have the ability to right click and explode collapse or also animate the explode. So this is a really great function for those work instructions where you want to be able to create a video and show somebody how a particular uh, set of parts goes together. In the animation controller here you can see that we've got three options to either go a normal playback, a loop, or reciprocate like I'm showing here. We also have the ability to knock the timing down either by half or to multiply it by two and that will speed that up. You can also see that we've got the ability to save this animation out. We can save this as an AVI file using either the SOLIDWORKS screen buffer, or if you've got the PhotoView 360 add-in turned on, you can photorealistic render these animations out. You can set your frames per second and your size. That way you're setting your video quality. My name is Tandy Banks. I hope you enjoyed this quick tip by GoEngineer.